Hi everyone, my name is Itai Kaplan for aetatsplus.com and this is what we're going to create today. Now, as you can probably see, this is an original tennis game which I took the other player and instead put a classic Pong brick from the game Pong one of my favorites, definitely. So, let's go into After Effects. Now, we have our footage, our tennis footage, and we're going to drag it into a new comp. And the first thing we do is we're going to track it. So, let's go to our tracker window. If you don't have it, just click Window, and here it is. Alright, so we're going to track our select track motion. We're going to check rotation and position as well. Let's zoom in and place our trackers. Now it's very important that you trace our trackers uh, right next to the place you want to edit or you want to work on. I'm not using those corners because this other player might interfere so this one should do the trick. And maybe we'll extend it a little bit. There we go. And let's analyze. Okay, After Effect has finished tracking our dots. You can see we have our little keyframes for every tracker. This will contain our tracking information. Alright, let's click layer new null object and we'll click edit target and make sure it's set for our null. Now we click apply apply dimensions X and Y and click OK and we got a new null that contains all the tracking information as you can see here. So now that we have our null ready we can remove this player so let's click our footage and control D to duplicate it right click time freeze frame so what we're going to do now is we're going to place two still images of this empty area here and empty area here so let's hide our original footage and you can mask out the rest of the footage maybe this is too far I don't want the audience to get in and let's hide it and we're going to parent to the null object now let's rename it empty still left and we're going to render it very quickly and as you can see when the player is moving to the left side of the screen is going to disappear okay now we're going to do the same thing for the right part of the screen so we click our footage control D to duplicate we'll call it empty still right right click it time and oh before we go Let's move on to about here and time freeze frame. Let's hide this one. And once again, we're going to mask, create a mask around this area. Now make sure your two masks are overlapping so won't cause any problems let's quick render it one more time oh before we render we should get our other steel and parent it to our null and we have our empty field very good okay so the, our next step is we're going to render this footage so let's click composition make movie We'll call it tennis footage empty. 
also save it as QuickTime Movie and we'll render it out. Okay, now that we have our empty footage, we can go ahead and track it with a special 3D software. Now, there are a lot of softwares out there. I personally use PFO by Pixel Farm, a pretty good uh, software that gives you a great result for a relatively small amount of money. Now, before we go, there's something that all those softwares have, have in common that they're not responding very well to moving objects like this one or the audience. So before we go, let's create a new solid, control Y or learn new solid. Let's make it comp size, maybe even larger. We're going to hide it and create a mask around the audience maybe. Here we go. And let's check that it's overlapping through the whole footage. All right. I'm going to do the same thing for those people down here. So once again, create a new solid, hide it, and create a mask. Now it doesn't have to be accurate, but you know, try to get as close as you can to those objects. Here we go. So we have another one here and create for this guy right here here we go and for our last one we're going to make a mask around our tennis player so let's create another solid Alright, let's hit M to bring out mask path, create a keyframe, move forward, let's move it a little bit, alright, now don't worry about the ball because we can uh, manually delete all the dots for this ball so it's alright. Another one. Here we go. And another one here. looks fine. Now don't worry about small imperfections like this shadow here or the ball or anything because we can manually delete it. Uh, one more thing you can see is that my masks are pretty big so try not to do that but for this uh, particular uh, footage it should do the trick. Okay one last thing we need to do is create another solid we'll make it black and we place it beneath our white uh, solids. We're going to render it out again. Quick time. We'll call it tennis footage masks. We'll hit render and let's go to PFO. Okay, so we're in PFO, as you can see, this blinking cow right here. Now we're going to import our footage. You can see here we have our original footage, our empty, and our mask. Let's import our empty footage. 
we can cancel this wizard and we're going to import our masks by clicking this button right here Let's go and import mask and as you can see it created this little I don't know purple areas okay so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to press track features now I'm not going to get into all the technical uh, stuff around this software and you can find a really good tutorial right here on AE Touch Plus uh, I'm just going to run through it very quickly so I'm going to pause the recording now and meet you in the next stage okay so as you can see PFO is finished tracking all those little dots right here everywhere basically and we can see that our tracking was pretty good by extending this part right here now our next step will be let's go to it doesn't really matter uh, will be to press here and place this box on a court so let's just pick a place where you can see a nice rectangle uh, area and just place it now it doesn't have to be as accurate as you think for this shot just need to do something that looks decent and we're going to press solve okay so PFO has finished solving all the dots and you can see we got a pretty decent result don't mind these red dots here and you can even see here that our footage is pretty good now another cool way to look at it is to click here on the 2D and switch it to 3D view and that's I don't know a nice way to look at it okay so one thing I noticed is in the end of our sequence wait here we go in the end of our sequence uh, something is pretty much messed up so what we're going to do is we're going to switch it to 7 and that way we're going to export only this sequence right here and we're going to ex exclude the last frame okay let's export our information to cinema 4d now as you can see you can choose cinema 4d here and let's give it a name scale factor doesn't really matter but you can leave it 100 click ok and i'll see you in cinema 4d okay so we're in cinema 4d we're going to open our track information and right now it doesn't look like anything so let's go to the background we're going to edit the background material by double clicking it texture and we're going to bring our original footage not the empty footage the original footage click yes and okay now as you can see our video dimensions are 4 by 3 which is not good so let's go to render settings output and we'll choose film video and 72025 and now you can see that all these dots are really belongs to the footage okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to choose a dot that uh, will be easy to work with so just run through here from the objects menu and here we go I think 19 is pretty good you'll probably get another uh, a different number but try to get uh, one of the dots on this line here so I'm going to select auto 19 
control X to cut it go up and control V just for it to be a lot more comfortable for us and the next step is we're going to create a cube and I'm not really want to drag it over here I'm just going to use the information from this dot so I'll press it coordinates and we're just going to copy it one by one there's probably an easier way to do this but this should work for now and the Z axis and here we go our cube is over here now one more important thing before we proceed is we're going to take the camera control or command and drag it to create a duplicate and we'll call it work cam we're going to use it later okay so now let's press our cube we'll bring it up and we're going to go to our work camera we're going to zoom in okay you can zoom by pressing 2 1 is pan and 3 is free rotate just for you to know and we're going to play with the cubes dimensions here we go I think this is pretty decent Let's get back to our PFO camera. Now you can see it's way too big, so we can continue playing with it. And bring it down. And you know what? Make it a little thinner. Okay, so now let's go to the object and check filet and choose 25. Now we can render it very quick and we have our brick ready. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is to create a new material. So file, shader, and we'll place a denel. Go to side, change the color to a very light green bluish color. Press OK. Uh, we're going to check environment. We're going to click image, surfaces, Venus. We're going to lower the intensity to 5 and the glare to 60. We're going to check roughness and we're going to change amplitude to 4 and the scale to 160 all right we're going to place the material on our cube hit render doesn't really look that good right now but I can assure you it will get a lot better okay so let's add a sky and for our sky we want to attach an HDRI so let's click on the content browser here and choose choose an HDRI I guess this one is good and place it on our sky now we don't want our sky to show up in our render although it kind of look nice I think so we're going to right click the sky, Cinema 4D tags, compositing, and uncheck scene by camera. So now we get the reflections from the sky onto our cube and we're not going to see the sky in our camera, which is pretty good. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to play a little bit with our render settings. So let's go back to render settings, choose anti aliasing change to best and animation and we're also going to create choose effect and create global illumination and this way our render will look 
a lot more nice than it is. All right, so one more thing is we want to make our cube an editable object, so we can do it by pressing C or pressing this button right here. And for our next thing, we're going to create a light. Once more, we're going to bring the light with the information from the this dot right here. Okay, let's bring it wait. Oops, let's bring it up and make it closer. Very good. And yeah, it looks pretty decent, I think. Okay, so our next step we're going to create keyframes for the movement of this cube. Now, you might be able to see that if we press play, uh, it's going to run pretty slow. That's because our background is a video. So another, a nice way to overcome this problem is by going back to After Effects. Let's go to our original tennis footage. And we're going to check when's the, uh, when's the player going to hit the ball on which frame, and that way we'll, we'll know how to place it. So move forward to place where he really swings the ball. As you can see, it's uh, on uh, frame 105. You can, if you can't see the frames, just command or control, click it, and it will switch from time code to regular frame. All right, so we know that our player swings the ball at 105. So let's go to 105. And, oh, I'm sorry. Let's go to the start of the composition and control click the X axis. Let's go to 105. We're going to place it right here and control click it again. Now we're going to move forward 10 frames. And we're going to control click one more time to create another keyframe. Okay, so let's go to the next swing. And here we can see it's 168. So let's go to 168. Let's move our brick, create a keyframe move 10 frames forward and create another keyframe and if we shut down our background for a second you can see that our break is moving kind of slow now if you remember from the original game the brick kept on moving constantly when you played against against the computer so what we're going to do is we're going to add few random keyframes so let's I don't know go to frame 23 and uh, let's move it here create a keyframe let's move forward uh, and another keyframe move forward and just random places and now we have our swing let's move forward another one once more let's
and let's go further and not here let's move it all the way here and less almost test one should be here and for last one make it all the way here okay so you can see that our pong brick kept on keeps on moving like it controlled by a I don't know very a crazy computer okay so for our next step we want to let's bring back our background and we want to create a shadow for this brick now I tried several ways to doing that and I found that the best way is to just control drag it to duplicate our cube bring it down maybe if even further make it flat and you might even resize it get it bigger and that's that way we're going to cover for some imperfections uh, that might have been caused by I don't know if our tracking was not pretty good so we're going to close this one from now for now and let's go to render setting one more time let's go to through this really quick we'll change the output to all frames let's make a path over here we'll call it tennis brick brick and we'll choose leave it 8 and we'll choose quick time movie one more time and make sure alpha channel is checked uh, alright that's look great we'll render it oh sorry before we render we need to hide our background and you know what all right let's render it first yes we're going to overwrite and now we're going to pause the recording and see you when the rendering is done all right so we finished rendering our brick looks pretty good we're going to close it for now now before we go to after effects we want to render our shadow as well so Let's close this one. Let's bring back our flat. Let's call it brick. This one a shadow. Our flat one will create a quick material for it. Double click here, material, and just change the color to an almost black color. Let's bring it to the shadow can delete the old one make sure it's back all right you know let's make it a little more flat that's it and one more time let's go to our render settings save let's call it tennis brick shadow make sure alpha channel is turned on we'll close it and render it again and I'll see you in After Effects okay so here we are in After Effects and we have our tennis brick and our tennis brick shadow videos and what we're going to do now is we're going to take our tennis empty footage and drag it into new comp and we're going to bring tennis brick as well you can see that it's looking pretty good now one thing we need to do is we need to continue the ball movement you can see here the ball disappearing and it's not really hitting the brick so 
what we're going to do is control Y to create a new solid we make it relatively small 8 by 8 and we'll choose the color of the ball which is um, kind of a really light yellow color and we can try to play with it to get more accurate color I think this is it okay so here are our ball basically it's not looking like a ball right now so what we're going to do is going to make a mask around it now we don't really want to make it look like a ball because we'll have a lot of motion blur and we just need to make it something like that I don't know what it is but it's going to be a ball and I see it's kind of small so we'll scale it up and oh another great tip I can give you for uh, working with small objects like this one is by pressing Control shift and H you can delete all uh, of these lines and uh, grids and you know nothing really interfere with your work right now so let's go to the frame where our original ball disappears and here it is we're going to move our new ball now we'll scale it back down here we go we might even need to color co correct it later on but it's okay now before we do this uh, let's bring back our original footage and place it on top of our empty footage just for us to see where the ball really is going let's hit alt left square bracket to trim our layer let's go to the position pressing P make a new keyframe go forward couple of frames and move it here okay try to zoom in our timeline and bring back all those lines control a and control shift h now we want the ball movement to be uh, rounder than this one so we're just going to play with the keyframes here we go and we'll move two frames forward add another keyframe oh I f something I forgot to do and it's very important I'll delete this keyframe let's go to uh, the original composition take our null object control C and control V to paste it in our new composition and we want our ball to parent with the null that way it would be more realistic all right so we have our new ball and we need to go forward a couple of frames oh. here we'll hide in the original one let's go forward and we can see that here our original ball comes back so we bring it back and I can see that this keyframe is not a Bezier keyframe so right click keyframe interpretation and make it Bezier maybe it is yeah it is too small all right and we can check what we have right now wait let's press first motion blur and 
add motion blur and let's see okay it looks nice it looks nice yeah it can work maybe we should I don't know scale it down a little bit here we go okay so let's go to our last keyframe we'll bring it back we'll bring up opacity by pressing shift and T so now we can see also the position and the opacity we'll add the keyframe we'll bring it to zero and now we can go back one frame page up and bring it up to 100 and that way our ball should disappear let's try this again zero hundred all right and now we need to go back to the other swing, other shot. And this one's going to be a little bit more difficult because the ball bounce. It should be that hard. So let's go to the last frame. Uh, make another one frame back, make another keyframe one frame forward 100 and let's bring our ball oh sorry let's bring our ball right next to the original one okay and we'll bring back up the original footage now let's go a few frames forward and we need to cheat a little bit here because the ball the original ball is kind of lower than our brick but it's all right it will go uh, smooth so we'll bring it here to the corner two frames forward and we'll create another keyframe and let's go through with it Let's hide the original one and we need to bring it back here. Okay, let's bring back our original footage. Let's bring back our guidelines. Control Shift H to make our path run round. And one more time keyframe interpretation nah, it was already busier oh, those are too small for me I'm sorry and we'll make it round and same thing here those are way too small I think it's not a Bayesian one right click oh come on all right no way you know what let's check this one the last one Zoom in Bezier and there we go. Okay, let's render it really really quick to see if it looks alright. 
Yeah, it looks good, I think. Let's hide the original one. It looks good. So what we need to do now is we go to our last position keyframe. Sorry about that. And we'll create another keyframe in the opacity. Zero, one frame back, page up and we bring it to a uh, hundred and as we can see now let's render everything really quick it looks pretty good uh, all right so one more thing we need to do before uh, we finish with this video now you might be able to see that there's a small, uh, very thin, dark line around our brick. So, I'm going to fix that by adding a roughen edges effect. Let's add it to our tennis brick. And we'll scale the ball down. That should do right. And we'll scale down roughness. And that's good. Another thing you might notice, sorry, uh, is that our tennis brick uh, it's in much higher uh, resolution than the rest of the footage. So we can fix this, fix this by adding a sorry mosaic effect to our brick. Something really, really big like all right and check sharp colors and we might even give it a little fast blare like so okay no that's too much let's bring it to one yeah that should work uh, all right so before we go another thing we can do is add an adjustment layer for color correcting so i'm using a uh, red giants colorista colorista gives a very nice look for everything Looking down. let's bring up the contrast and I like this color right here might even make it a little more bright and another trick we can use is add another adjustment layer Add to it fast blur. This is a cool trick. Boost it up a little bit, maybe 11. Repeat edges pixel and make it overlay. And it really gives a nice contrast and glowing effect. Oh, we forgot to add our shadow, of course. Let's bring our shadow, put it beneath the tennis brick and beneath our uh, our ball and we'll go to our tennis shadow make it multiply uh, add to it a fast blur maybe reduce the opacity a little bit We might even give it a fill effect. I don't know, just make it a little more suitable for our colors. And that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. My name is Itai Kaplan for AE Tats Plus and I'll see you next time.